Hi, I'm Ann Wheel. I write the blog Flax and Twine, and today I'm going to show you how to make a very luscious arm knit cowl. My favorite thing about arm knitting is that you don't need any tools to do it. You're knitting on your arms. There are no little itty bitty needles to deal with. It's all right here. And when you do that, you make these giant oversized stitches that are just gorgeous. You just want to snuggle down with it. The other thing that's awesome is it's super fast. So you can just make all these fabulous gifts for your friends and family. I'm going to show you how to cast on, how to work a basic knit stitch, how to stop in the middle if you need to, how to keep your stitches tight, how to bind off, and finally, how to weave the ends in. I like to add a fun embellishment by adding pom-poms to each corner. If you haven't started making your handmade gifts for the holidays, these arm knit cowls are a fabulous place to start. You can bang one out in an hour, and in a Saturday afternoon, you can have a whole stack ready for giving. Let's review the materials we're gonna need for this class. First things first, you need three skeins of super bulky yarn at about 100 yards for each skein. So that's about 300 total. You can go down to about 85 yards, but around that area is best. I'm using Rowan Big Wool, but there's a wide variety of yarns you can use. And I'm gonna show you how to find the right yarn. Super bulky is simply a name for the weight and the size of the yarn, the thickness of the yarn. I'm gonna give you a couple guidelines for what to look for when you go shopping for a super bulky yarn. And you can find this yarn at your local yarn store. And what you wanna do is you wanna look at the label. You wanna look for this symbol here where you see the gauge of the yarn. And the important numbers are here, the seven and a half to nine stitches. That means that's how many stitches you get in traditional knitting over a four inch square. The range you're looking for to make a very luscious, rich cowl is between 10 and under. It may be counterintuitive, but the lower the number, the bigger the yarn. Super bulky goes up to a 12 stitch range, but you really wanna stay at that lower end, which means it's a thicker yarn. Another clue you can find on some yarn labels is a large skein symbol that has a big number six in it. And a lot of labels will have that to indicate that that's a super bulky yarn. And you're gonna need a paper towel roll to hold the stitches in case you need to stop in the middle, a pair of scissors for the very end, I'm gonna show you a variation at the end that involves pom-poms, which will be really fun. And if you're going to do that, you're going to need another skein of yarn, about 70 yards. I like to use my iPhone as a pom-pom maker, but you can also use a piece of cardboard that's about three by four. Now we're gonna cast on, and you're going to be putting the three skeins of yarn together. You're gonna to knit with them at the same time, so you're almost plying a very thick yarn. That's what gives that arm knit fabric its plushness. We're gonna start with some terminology. You have your three skeins here, and the yarn that comes from these skeins, that's called your working yarn. So this coming from your balls is your working yarn. And this part here is called your tail. The kind of cast on we're doing is similar to a long tail cast on in knitting. You need enough of this tail in order to form the stitches on your arm. My rule of thumb is to use about a yard for every 10 stitches. So to be safe, I use about a yard and a half of tail in order to cast on the 11 stitches we'll need for this project. So the way we start this is you want to start with a slip knot. To do a slip knot, you wanna take the tail in your left hand and the working yarn in your right. You wanna put the tail over your left hand and then you wanna bring that working yarn over your hand. So you have a loop like this. Reach through that loop and take the working yarn and bring it through the loop and you wanna pull that tight. Then what you wanna do is put that loop that you formed onto your right hand. So to tighten it, you just pull apart the working yarn, which is in your right hand, and the tail, which is in your left, and you pull them away from each other, and you can see that tightening on my wrist. So that's it, you've done your first stitch. Now to cast on the next stitch, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tail in your hand, and you're gonna form a loop, and I like to think it has the shape of a four. And what you wanna do is you wanna reach through that loop and grab the working yarn. Then you wanna pull the working yarn through that loop and drop it. Drop what's in your right hand. You take the working yarn and you put it onto your right hand. 
Then what you're going to do is pull that stitch tight by again pulling apart the working yarn and the tail. And that's your second stitch. I'm going to do that again. You take your tail and you make a loop. See how it looks like a four? And then you're going to reach through that loop with your left hand, grab the working yarn, bring it through, and then you're going to drop the top of the four. Well, you're going to drop what was in your right hand, and then you put your right hand through that new loop. You're going to pick up the working yarn in your right hand and the tail in your left, and you're going to pull them apart to tighten it. Now we've got three stitches. We're going to keep on casting on here until we get 11 stitches. And what you're going to find is that over time, you'll find shortcuts that you like to use. You might not hold it exactly the same way we learned right here, right off. Just start to do what's comfortable for you. To see if you have enough, you're going to count your stitches here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just want to be careful when you're counting those stitches that you keep each strand of yarn together. So as you know, we have three strands that are together to make your yarn. So each stitch will have the three strands in it. And it should be pretty clear when you're looking at it. So we got to eight and now we're going to do the last three stitches. One thing you want to pay attention to is that when you pull your yarn apart, you, you want to pull them together. You don't want to pull one or you could end up with bunching like that and you don't want that. You want to pull those all together so your stitches are even. That was one, two, this is our third and last stitch. So that's in all 11 stitches cast on. Congratulations. And now we're ready to knit. Arm knitting is very similar to traditional knitting in that you're moving the stitches from your right arm over to your left arm. What's different is instead of turning your whole work around as you would in traditional knitting, you simply move the stitches from your left arm back to your right. Now that we're ready to knit, we're going to forget about the tail. We don't need this anymore, at least not until the end. So we're not going to use that. We're going to go just to the working yarn. And the way we want to do our first stitch is we're going to bring that working yarn over our thumb. We're going to grab onto the yarn with our fist. And now we're going to take this first stitch right here. And again, you want to make sure you grab the three strands together. And we're going to pull this over our fist like that. Now you're going to drop the stitch you just pulled over and you're going to take your hand and you're going to go in this little space that's right between your thumb and the yarn. You're going to push your hand through there and you're going to move this loop onto your left hand. So you've now done the first stitch. You want to tighten this down a little bit before we start our next stitch. You're going to, again, grab that working yarn with your fist. And this is the tricky part because now we're attached and your family can do anything they want to you at this point. It's still a lot of fun though. So let's keep going for our second stitch. You're going to bring the working yarn over your thumb again and into your fist. You're going to reach over and grab that second stitch. So you'll see it's loose enough that I'm still able to function and move my hand, but you don't want it really loose or you're going to have enormous stitches. So you want to keep that tight. Bring the working yarn over your thumb, close your fist, come in, reach the second stitch here and bring that over your fist. And now you're going to take your left hand and you're going to go into this space between the working yarn right underneath your thumb and you're going into this loop and you bring that over your left hand. Now you've got two stitches. We're going to do it again and I'm going to show you slowly again. You bring that working yarn over your thumb and to keep the stitches tight, it helps to be close to your left hand. So if you have your left hand and your right hand close together, that helps keep those stitches tight. You're going to close over your fist, grab the third stitch, pull it over your fist, then you're going to let that go. You can see this space here. That's where your hand's going to go through the loop and you bring that loop of the working yarn up over your left hand. And that's your third stitch. So we'll do it again. Close your fist over it. It's over your thumb. You reach the stitch. Bring it over your fist. 
drop that stitch and we're going to go into this space right in here and bring it over your hand. For the next stitch, I'm going to show you more of an open hand so you can see a little bit more what's going on. I'm going to pull this next stitch over and you'll see I'm going to hold this. This was what was in my fist. But you can see this is the prior row, the prior stitch, and this is our new stitch. And what makes the way I arm knit different than most people out there is I give this stitch a little half turn. And that's what you're doing when your hand goes underneath your thumb. It's giving this twist to it naturally, but if you have a loose hand, this is what you're gonna see. So again, this was on your arm. When you pull this over, this, you see it come up and it comes up this way, but you wanna give it that half twist before it goes onto this hand. So I'll show you that again. So instead of the fist, I'm now holding it with my fingers and I'm gonna pull that stitch over, give it a half twist and put my hand through. I'm showing you the open hand so you can see what's actually happening to that loop as we give it that half twist. And you might find it's actually a little faster to do it this way than the closed fist way. The important thing about that half twist is that's what enables the stitches in my arm knitting to be like a traditional knit stitch. A lot of times people will not give it that extra half twist and what you end up with is cross stitches on all your rows. And that's not what I like to see in a cowl. I like to see that really traditional knit fabric, but in the larger scale. The final stitches are a straight V. I'm gonna finish this row with the closed fist method. As I said, it's the same as what I just showed you. It's just sometimes it's easier for beginners. So again, you'll see there's the space. You put your hand into it and bring it over your left hand. You put that working yarn in your fist, bring it over. And the first row is harder to do than the remaining rows. The stitches get a little looser and easier to move back and forth. And you wanna make sure you keep your yarn smooth and not have loops in them. It's nice to keep it taut and together. And here's the last one. Through, you put that on your left hand. Congratulations, you've just finished your first row of arm knitting. It's exciting. It starts to be so cool and big right from the start. I love it. We're gonna start now on the second row. It's basically the same as the first, except we're moving the stitches from our left arm back onto our right. The stitches are worked the same way. You start by bringing that working yarn again over your thumb and into your fist. You wanna pick up this first stitch, bring it over your fist, and then remember this little space under here, that's where you wanna put your hand and you move the loop onto your right hand. You wanna tighten that down a little bit. That's how those stitches stay tight. Now you're gonna take this working yarn and again, put it over your thumb. You're gonna take the first, second stitch, bring it over your fist, drop it, put your hand underneath your thumb into that space and put that on. If you leave these loose like this, you'll end up with kind of uneven stitches and a looser fabric. So after you bring these loops onto your right hand, you wanna take your working yarn, organize it a little bit, tighten it down a little bit. You want this as snug as it can be without being so tight that you can't move them or that you can't do the stitches. And remember, my arm size is different than your arm size. If my daughter arm knit a scarf, it would obviously be itty bitty where if my husband did, it would be much bigger. So there is some variation in the size of the stitch that you end up with. Grab that working yarn, the stitch you just made close to your arm to do the next stitch here. And then this would be the open turn method we were talking about where you see that twist in the hand. It's the same thing as the closed fist. You're just able to see what's happening. So again, you keep those stitches nice and consistent. You grab the working yarn close to the stitch you just made. You reach over, grab the next stitch. I'm doing it with the closed hand here and you're putting it through and over your other hand. 
and you tighten it down. See, I can move my wrist, but they're fairly snug. We're gonna keep going. Put that working yarn over that thumb and into your fist and bring the stitch over. Put your hand underneath your thumb. And there you go, we're almost done. We're halfway through the next row. Here we go. I'm gonna show you an open twist. Here's that twist. You can see what's happening. The yarn that comes from the stitch you just made is going to the back of your hand. And your working yarn is gonna be in the front. That's how you know you've done that half twist because you see that working yarn comes over and it's facing you, it's in the front. And that's how you want it to be. Either direction that you're going, whether you're going from the right to the left or the left to the right, you want that working yarn in front. We're gonna finish this off. And if you find it's getting loose, you know, if you go back and let's say I've done this more loose and, and you see how it's snug back here, but boy, it's starting to get looser and looser, you can always go back in and tighten it down by pulling from the back now I've got a looser stitch, and then you're gonna pull from the back again. See all this extra yarn that had been in there? We're getting that out of there. So that's another way to tighten your stitches as you go, and just make sure you still wanna be able to move your arm, but these stitches now look very consistent. We're gonna finish the last couple of stitches here. You put that working yarn in your left hand, bring the stitch over your fist, Put your hand through the loop. And this is the last one. Now bring this over. Here you go. This last loop goes on to your wrist. So that's it. You have two rows of arm knitting. And it's simple. From then on, you just continue to move the stitches from your right arm to your left and your left arm to your right. You just keep doing that until you get to about 58, 60 inches. So I'm gonna keep knitting here. There you go, third row. We're gonna go back the other way. Sometimes people get confused because they're so used to going one direction when they go to turn the other way. It's a little disconcerting to start putting the working yarn over your other hand. Remember, when you're making new stitches, the working yarn goes in the hand that has the older stitches on it. That's a way to help keep it straight. And what you'll find is as you get more adept at doing the arm knitting, you'll find shortcuts or patterns for your hands that are easy or easier for you, and you'll start picking up pace. As you start going faster and faster, you'll find that you need that yarn from those skeins faster and faster. I find at home it's helpful to put the skeins in a bag or a basket so that they're a little bit more contained when I'm tugging on the yarn it makes the process a little bit smoother. All right, the other thing you might be wondering, this is my most asked question, how do I possibly stop in the middle? Well, it's very easy. It's a matter of just putting the stitches that you've made onto a holder of some sort. And in this case, I'm using this paper towel tube. I like to use these tubes because they're similar in size to your arm and they hold the stitches very nicely. What we're gonna do here is move the stitches from our arm onto the paper towel tube, which is now our holder. It's very simple. You just move each stitch in order onto this tube. Now, if you don't have a tube, you can use a piece of scrap yarn and pull the stitches onto the scrap yarn in the same way. Just if you do it that way, you have to be more careful because the stitches have a tendency to pull out a little bit. So when you put it back on your arm, it can be a little trickier. Using this tube is the easiest way to see very clearly what needs to happen when it goes back on your arm. So here we go. You have all the stitches on your paper towel tube. You can set it down and go do whatever it was that you needed to go do. And when you come back, it's very easy to pick it up again. Let's just take a moment to look at something that I get asked about a lot while the stitches are flat like this. 
You'll see on the edges, you have larger loops here and then a little tight loop here and then a larger loop here and a tight loop here. This happens because of the nature of arm knitting that you can't turn it around and do your next row. So you end up with these slightly uneven from row to row stitches. And when you're a beginner, this is even more pronounced. So you might find on yours that it looks kind of more like that. And you'll be like, oh no, but it's okay. Sometimes you can just go in and manually make it a little more even. So that's one thing you can do to make those even. And I wouldn't bother making them really even because they naturally are gonna do this. But if it's super loose, you can kind of even out those stitches. Because this is just a knit fabric, what will happen as you do the knitting and, and make your cowl is it curves under. So what people will see is this beautiful first row of stitches. They won't see this side, which will be curved under. Let's say you come back from whatever it was you're doing and your arm knitting is all in a pile and you want to be like, oh no, how am I going to get that back on? Don't freak out. It's very easy to figure out. There are a couple clues that I'm going to point to to show you how to get it back on your arm. The first thing you want to do is bring your tube back in your hands and you want to make sure the right side of the fabric is facing you. Now this is the side that's the right side the one that looks like a typical knit fabric. That's the right side. I'm gonna show you the wrong side so you can see. This is the wrong side. So if you pick it up and you see these bumps facing you, these are purl stitches. This is what a purl stitch looks like. This is not the right way to put it back on your arm. You, you wanna have it so that these knit stitches are facing you. And now the next thing people freak out about is they say, but which arm do I put it back on? I can't remember which arm it was on. And it's okay. The telling clue for that is you have this working yarn over here. And what you know is that that working yarn needs to end up by your hand to do the next row. So if the working yarn is over here on the right, you wanna to start to put these stitches back onto your left so that by the time you move all the stitches back from the holder onto your arm, that working yarn is ready to go. So we're gonna to start to do that. We're gonna scrunch it all towards the side and move it back on to your left arm. After a while, you'll get so that you see the stitches so well that sometimes I don't even put them on a holder because you can start to see where they are and where they go and it's easy to kind of get them back on. So here we go. I'm going to do three at once here. After you've put them back on your arm, you might want to come in here and tighten them a little and make them a, a consistent because you want that row to have the same look all the way across. So you just pull those stitches a little bit, making sure you grab three strands at the same time. And you tighten them a little bit down till you get to the end. So you see those are nice and straight and snug against my arm. And now you have your working yarn and you're ready to go. I wanna show you one more thing, and it's about drop stitches, that thing that always freaks people out when you're a new knitter. And I want you to know that it's not something that should make you worry too much, because I'm gonna show you really clearly. See, what if this happens and, oh my God, your stitches are coming undone? And you have something like this. It's okay, don't panic. What you have here is a V, a V, a V. And so when you've dropped these stitches like this, you wanna remake the Vs. So you want to reach in here and pull that loop through. This is your working yarn from a couple rows ago. Let's see how I made a new V there. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this yarn that has come out of the stitch and we're going to bring it through this loop here, just like that. And see how when I do that, it makes the new V, V, and one more. This goes right through here. And there you've picked up a stitch. Easy peasy. And that just goes right back on your hand. And you have the working yarn over here. And you can keep knitting until you get to that 58 inches. You've knit 58 inches of gorgeous arm knit stitches. And now we're going to bind off. You're going to need a little bit of yarn to actually bind off the stitches. And then you need a little bit of yarn to 
seam the ends together. You want to leave about three yards to finish, both to bind off and then to seam the rest of the cowl. So when you bind off, you start knitting just like you would a regular row. So you take the working yarn and you put it in your hand and we're going to start doing those stitches. But you want to stop after two stitches. So now I have two stitches on my left hand. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull that first stitch here on your hand and you're going to bring it over the last stitch you just put on. So when you're done with that, you should just have one stitch on your left hand. After you do that, you're going to pull the next stitch from your where the, all the old stitches are off. You're going to make one new stitch and that's going to go on your left hand. And again, now you have two stitches on this hand. And so you're going to take the first stitch and you're going to pull it off your hand. Basically what you're doing here is you're locking down those loops so that the stitches won't come undone. It's important not to bind off too tight. So it's very easy to take this next stitch and when you pull this over, pull this really, really tight. And you don't want to do that because that's going to make the edge of your cowl too tight compared to the rest of the fabric. You want the stitches in your bind off to match. You don't need to take it off your wrist like I just did, but you want the stitches in your bind off to match the stitches underneath in width, overall width. So we're going to keep on going. You knit a stitch from your right hand and put it on your left. Now you've got two over here. So you pull the first one over the one you just put on and you don't want to tighten it up too much. Do it again. In this case, I'm binding off the stitches that were all on my right arm, but you can do it the other way too. It's the same technique. If you started with them all on your left arm, you would just knit two stitches and again, do the same bind off action, taking that first stitch and pulling it over the stitch you had just put on. And again, you want to tighten it a little bit, but not too much so that it's pulling the stitches together. When you get to the last loop on your arm, what you want to do is you want to find the end of your yarn. And if say your skeins were much more yardage than what I had, you just want to trim it with at least two yards to go, or even a yard is fine at this point. But you want to then take the ends of that yarn and pull it through the last loop on your hand. So you're basically locking down the last stitch. So you pull that working yarn through that last stitch like that. So now here's your cast on edge and you can see that the width of the bind off is very similar to the width of the stitches below. You don't have it gathering in really tight. You don't have it way loose. If you're going to make the scarf, you would stop here and I'm going to show you in a little bit how to make the pom poms and weave in the ends. If you're going to make the cowl, we're going to go ahead and seam that up right now. You want to take the bound off edge and you want to bring it over to the left and you're going to turn it so that it's purl side up. And you're going to stretch it out here. It looks so pretty. Then what you want to do is you want to bring the ends to the middle here. Now you've matched them up and this is how you're going to make that infinity cowl loop. But what you can see here is the difference between Though you've matched your bound off to the width of your stitches, naturally when you do this, your cast on edge tends to be tighter. And what you're going to want to do is loosen this cast on edge so that it matches your bound off edge. And the way you do that is you start at the end away from the tail. This is your cast on edge and this is the tail that we originally started with. And what you're going to do is you want to spread these stitches out a little bit so that it matches the bound off edge you just did. I'll pull it just a little bit. You don't want to pull it too wide because you don't want it wider than the edge. But you see how this matches up really nicely stitch for stitch all along the edge. To mattress stitch these edges together, what you're going to do is you're basically going to take this leftover yarn from your bound off edge 
and you're going to feed it back and forth stitch for stitch across both ends. Even though you're stitching from the right side, it's absolutely like magic. It just comes together and the seam is totally hidden. You can't even see it. So you're gonna take the yarn that's left over from the bound off edge and we're gonna start by coming over here through the edge of your cast on side. And you're gonna go under this first stitch and you're gonna feed the yarn through that hole. And you're just gonna pull it through there. Just like that. Now we're gonna bring that end and you can see over here this is one row of stitches here. And you see this V here? This is one stitch. We're gonna bring that yarn underneath that stitch and through, just like that. Right underneath that stitch. So there you go, now we've brought it over to this side. Now we're gonna come back over to this side and you can see here also, there's this line of stitches, V, 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 and here's the V coming into the cast on edge right there. And we're gonna go under that stitch, just like that. We're gonna pull that through. And there you go. Now, we're gonna go back over to the other side. Some people get worried about exactly where the yarn is going, and you don't need to worry so much about which stitch you're picking up where. This is one way to do it. The most important part is to just be consistent in how you do it. So if you are picking up a V on one side, just make sure when you come back to that same side, you pick up the similar strands on the other side. I've done this V here, so now I wanna do this V. You can see the line of stitches here, this V right here. The bound off edge is right here. You wanna feed the yarn through there. Pull that through. And now guess what? We go back to the other side and we're gonna go underneath the next stitch. Again, here's the line of stitches right here. V, V, V. We're gonna go under this one and pull it through. like that. We're going to go back to the other side. And you're just going to keep doing this. Stitch from one side to the other, one side to the other, picking up the stitch, one on each side as you go. So you're matching stitches along that bound off edge and cast on edge. You can see here that it's starting to pull together clean, so you can't even see that seam. Now that I've shown you the first few, I'm gonna actually show you a faster way to do it now that you know exactly what's happening. And the way to do that is instead of pulling it through on every single stitch, you're still gonna go under the same stitches, but you're just gonna take this thread and weave it from side to side, going underneath the same stitches that we were before, only you're not pulling it through the stitch every single time. So you can see how this becomes faster. You can just pull it as you go and you're going underneath those same V's as you go. Make sure you don't lose one of your strands. And remember, there's the V. You can pull, pull out a little bit of slack here. We're gonna keep going to the end. Keep going to the very end. And then you just bring it through this last stitch on this side, and then you just pull. And this is the magic part. It all comes together. Now what you wanna make sure you don't do is pull it so tight that it's all bunched up like that. You wanna keep it loose enough through here that the stitches look even and nice and the width of your seam is the same as the width of the rest of the fabric. So you can play with this a little bit and get it just how you like it. Now you do end up with a seam under here, but that will be against your neck and nobody will see that. 
or you can keep it to the side if you don't want that chunk right next to your neck. Now we're going to weave in the ends. So you've got both your tail from the cast on and that working end from the bound off edge and we're going to weave those in. This is where people get worried. They think, oh my gosh, I don't want it to unravel. I don't want to lose all the work I did. A lot of people feel more comfortable knotting it here. I don't always do that, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, we're going to knot it. First, you want to take your scissors and cut the ends. You want to leave about eight inches on either side. I'm going to do a simple square knot and maybe do it again, keeping those three strands together. That knot will blend right into the edge. And then the next part is just to weave these ends in. And I like to weave them into the seam. You can see here that this was your cast on edge and that's a little bit tighter. And this is your bound off edge here. Well, with these ends, because you're wearing it a lot and moving it a lot, I like to bring the ends through these really tight cast on edges right here. See how tight that is compared to this loosey goosey part. So we're gonna bring this under here and when you weave in edges, it doesn't really matter, especially when it's in a seam like this, it doesn't really matter. You wanna keep all the strands together. I only pulled two through there, but we're gonna pull all three. There's no rhyme or reason as much as you just wanna get those ends tucked in a tight stitch or two so that they don't come out as you're moving around. So you can even come in down here go through some of these stitches. Again, it doesn't really matter which one specifically. Now we're gonna take the other end. We're gonna go through here and go through here. And here too, you don't wanna pull your ends so tight that they bunch up the side of your cowl. Always keep this width, the same width as the fabric underneath. Let's just do one more here. There you go. And then that's it. Those are your woven in ends. And you're just gonna come back in with the scissors and clip it off. Just like that. There you go. And they're in those nice tight stitches so they won't come out or they'll be less likely to come out. But if they do come out, you can just weave them right back in again and stick to those tight stitches. Now your cowl is done and we need to put it on. Put it on with the seam near the back and you do one twist and put the rest of it over your head. And now you're ready for your next adventure. Let's go. We're gonna do a fun scarf variation on this cowl now. Instead of going to seam the two ends together, we're gonna to leave those undone and we're gonna start by weaving in the ends. You wanna trim them to about eight inches. You're gonna take your tail and we're gonna weave it in along this edge so that it's up from the edge of the scarf and it's not along the edge here either, but it's kind of in the underneath part. So take your tail and you're gonna kind of weave it following the lines of the stitches. So see how that kind of follows the line of the stitch that was right there. And this comes down through, again, the line of the stitch kind of goes down here through this pearl bump. And I just skip over this part here and come up through this bump and then down through this next one here. Again, following the line of the stitches, just like that. Tuck this underneath this last stitch. And now this might come loose a little bit, but for the most part, it's gonna stay hidden and you won't be able to see it. And you can trim a little bit off here so that it's just not sticking out right there. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other end with the tail from the cast on edge. You can leave that as is, but I like to add a fun embellishment by adding pom-poms to each corner. I actually really love pom-poms and anyone who has had them on an article of clothing before will know what I'm talking about. They're so much fun to squeeze. So let's do that. I'm gonna show you how I make pom-poms. Now I've got a very lazy man's way of making pom-poms. Usually what it is is I have a pile of yarn that I've been arm knitting or something next to me on the couch and I have my iPhone <laughs> and I don't have anything else. So I started using my iPhone to make pom-poms and it actually works really well. You can do this with a piece of cardboard that's about similar dimensions. It can be up to an inch or two shorter than this as well. But all you're gonna do if you're using a phone or the cardboard is you're gonna hold onto this and start wrapping 
around the phone. And it's a little bit of a tedious process because it's a lot of wrapping. The key to fabulous pom-poms is a lot of yarn. Sometimes I count, when I've counted, it's about 70 wraps. But on the iPhone, it's basically until it's like, I can't put any more on this. <laughs> Okay, it's starting to get unwieldy. I know I'm almost there. So basically what you wanna think about is that when you squeeze that yarn, that when you cut the top, it's gonna to form a nice cone up here, a nice round cone. If you're worried about the one skein being enough for all your palms, you might wanna divide it up into four equal parts before you start, and then you won't have like one little itty bitty thin one and one thick one. What you're gonna do when you get to that thickness is you're gonna cut the yarn right here. So now you just have this big loop on your phone. And then you need a length of yarn to hold the center. So you're gonna cut a long piece here, a little more than 12 inches. And this part is gonna go around the middle. Now I like to kind of loosely tie it here so that you can get that phone out without losing the center. So you start to peel this part off your phone or your cardboard, just like that. And you scoot it out. So now you see you've got your tie yarn in the middle and you want to crank down on this like as hard as you can. So if you have a yarn that's more breakable than this yarn, this yarn has a nice twist in it so it's stronger yarn than some wools. If you have a yarn that's going to break you might want to do this part with some twine or some heavier duty yarn that's less breakable, like a cotton yarn is not gonna break as easily as a wool might. So you wanna pull that really tight, and then you wanna flip this bundle over. You kinda of wanna make sure this center piece is in the center. So tighten that down again. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna tie this one more time, but you're gonna go around twice. This is the first part of a surgeon's knot, like that, because that really makes sure that it pulls tight. You're going to flip it over again. The tighter your center, the better your pom-poms because you're basically bringing all this yarn to a center bit. Like this. So there we go. We're going to do this one more time. Now you've got your tie-on yarn here and you want to keep this in your hand. I maybe should have started with a longer yarn here because you don't want this to get lost in the ones you're cutting, but you can hold on to it here and we're gonna start cutting. You can see here, for example, this one was really long. That was easy to hang on to. Now you have this bundle and what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach with the scissors in and you're gonna start to cut these lengths of loops. Don't be scared. The pom-pom will be very happy at the end. You wanna come in here and you'll see there's an inner layer of loops because you kind of wrapped around so many times. So you want to push those layers out and get into the center loops. And cut those too. Get some more in here. In the beginning, when you first cut this, and this is part of the result of doing it in the way we did, you've got this extra length and this is all going to be trimmed so it'll seem like a looser pom-pom but by the time you trim it down to this size it's gonna come into this tightness because as you move towards the center all the yarn pieces are tighter together. But it looks like we've got all our loops. Now we're gonna flip it over and hang on to those ties still, those center ties. And the other thing about doing this method is there's a little bit more trimming involved than if you did it on like a pom-pom maker or a template with a center circle in it. That makes really nice even lengths of yarn and somehow I find it easier and <laughs> I guess more fun to do. I guess again it's lazy. But then you get all these fun little shreds everywhere. You'll see that it's a kind of oblong shape. So now we're going to go in and we're going to start trimming. We're going to give this little pom-pom a haircut along the edges. You want to try and maintain that circle shape. You see how it's starting to come together a little bit more here. Now it's like hair cutting. You don't want to go too crazy because you want some room to even it out if things go awry. So you want to just keep trimming little bits and getting that shape down. I'm hanging on to those center threads. So 
So once you have that pom-pom looking just how you want it, and you get pretty obsessive with getting it just right, um, you can set it aside and then you can go ahead and we're gonna attach all the pom-poms to the corners of the scarf. And it's pretty simple. You just kind of pick the place that you want to, attach it and bring it nice and tight. And again, we're gonna do that surgeon's knot where you go around twice so that it stays really tight to this. And again, we're gonna do it again, twice. There you go, just like that. And that'll be pretty secure. If you want, one thing that you can do is you could have tied it on. If you have extra of the scarf color left, you could tie that center piece with the green color. Because it's knotted, you just wanna tuck those ends in a little bit. I'm just gonna do this. We're just gonna trim it down. I'm gonna go back actually towards the palm so that the ends of it end towards the palm. I'm gonna do this back towards it. And then we're gonna cut it here with a little, little bit of length to it right there. And then we're gonna kinda tuck that bit into the palm kind of spread the palm out over those ends. You attach the rest of the palms on each corner in the same way, and then your scarf is ready to wear. Whether you knit the scarf or the cowl, either one makes an absolutely wonderful gift. Luscious, cozy, perfect for your favorite friends and family.